Pleased to be joined by Milton MP Adam Vancouver. And good afternoon, Adam. Hi, Jason. Nice to see you. You are looking very rural today with the wood behind you there. <laughs> well, Milton is fairly rural riding, um, but I'm taking a couple days at the cottage, just recovering from a trip over to Birmingham at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, so, yes, indeed, it is. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in the, in the country. All right. Well, let's start there, actually, because, you know, we talk a lot about Milton when we have you on, but you are the parliamentary secretary for two ministers. And we'll start with sport. You mentioned being over in Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games. As a former elite athlete yourself, though, do you have any issue, you know, sitting on the sideline and sitting there going, man, I wish I could still be doing this? Are you okay with it at this point? No, I don't have any issue with watching Canada's finest athletes compete. I loved it. I had a great time. I went to the opening ceremonies. We went to the Team Canada flag raising. We met athletes and coaches and administrators and ministers of sport from all sorts of the 72 countries in the Commonwealth. And I'd never been to the Commonwealth Games before because canoe kayak, despite having strong representation from Commonwealth countries, just has never been on the on the program. Mm -hmm. um, another group that I met with was the the group from Hamilton who are bidding for and hoping to bid for the 2030 Commonwealth Games to bring them to our region, which would be amazing for Milton because we've got a velodrome, we've got all sorts of sports fields, we've got facilities and infrastructure that, that could use an upgrade and the Commonwealth Games would do that. It would also provide another international sport uh, opportunity for all of those great facilities across our region. Uh, but Commonwealth was awesome. Birmingham did an extraordinary job. I got to go out to triathlon, uh, field hockey. I watched squash. Squash is a cool sport because it's not in the Olympics. It's uh, it's only in the in the Commonwealth Games. Uh, we got out to. I think I mentioned field hockey. We got to rugby sevens. Watch our women uh, beat England uh, in the rugby sevens match. That was incredible. Um, and then we ended the day at three x three basketball, both able bodied. And then we watched men's, women's, and then men's wheelchair as well. And just a high energy sport. Uh, really, really cool to watch. It's half court. And it's unique to uh, to the Commonwealth Games. So yeah, just an extraordinary trip. A little bit short, uh, but I had good meetings with the High Commissioner of the UK. That's uh, that's Ralph Goodale, and uh, His Excellency, I think I'm supposed to say. And then I also had some meetings with the with the bid committee from 2030 to talk about their priorities for Hamilton 2030. An extraordinary trip, really really packed, but only about three days. Well, we're going to get a little closer to home though with the Canada Games, which I'm sure you're going to be at as well. And that's just down the street in Niagara. Amazing. Yeah. So I actually am an alumni of the Canada Games, unlike the Commonwealth. So I did go in 1997 back in, in Brandon, Manitoba. And thanks for mentioning it because I've got my blood, sweat and maple syrup hoodie mm -hmm. on to celebrate the Canada Games because the opening ceremonies are this Saturday. And I'm hoping that as many Miltonians as possible, particularly young people and kids, buy tickets to the Canada Games and go and watch your favorite event because it's just a drive down the QEW to Niagara region. It's a beautiful part of our province. And it's also just an amazing opportunity to go and watch some of our nation's finest young athletes compete for their provinces and territories. I'm a huge fan. I'm going out on Friday. Uh, we've got some, some uh, federal, provincial and territorial meetings about physical activity, health and sport and, and, and the intersection of all those important things. So I'm joining ministers of health and sport from across the country to discuss those important issues. Still on the topic of sport, Saturday evening, I'm going to be flying out to Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, because the world championships for canoe kayak are being hosted on Lake Bannock. Uh, which is my former sport. And I'm so, so excited that the World Championships are coming back to Canada. This is the, the, the pinnacle of the season. This is the first World Championship since last year's Olympics. Uh, so I'm really, really thrilled and excited to be uh, going out and watching some of those athletes. Now, actually, Jason, that might be the sports competition. Well, I'll get a little bit of an itch and say, I should probably get out there for a paddle. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it definitely after all those years doing it. Um, so, you know, we talked about, you know, you're the Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Sport. Along with that, you mentioned health there. And let's talk about a video that you just recently put out. Actually, it was the Government of Canada that did for U equals U, the HIV response. Now, actually, before I saw this, I was not familiar with it at all, as many of our viewers are not. So please tell us more about it. Absolutely. So in Montreal, just this week, uh, the global AIDS and HIV conference is happening. And obviously, Canada has been a leader in the quest and, uh, and goal to eradicate AIDS and HIV. Um, but there's also been so many medical advancements in the last uh, decades that um, there is a campaign around something called U equals U, like you said, it is un undetectable equals untransmittable. And what that means is that when somebody's successfully reduced their viral load, 
uh, to a degree that is untransmissible un, uh, and undetectable, then they are basically free and clear from AIDS and HIV. And um, that's an important recognition is that, that it, the capacity and the ability to bring somebody's viral load uh, down to those, those numbers is feasible and, and practical. And that should reduce the stigma, increase services, and make sure that AIDS and HIV is no longer uh, a deadly uh, a deadly disease and a, and such a you know a, a terrible thing to be to be living with. But AIDS and HIV rates are still uh, high across the world. Um, it's important to recognize it still affects many many lives. So that's why our government is proud to commit an incremental 18 million dollars uh, to services available to the AIDS and HIV community. That includes uh, services, home services. Uh, self-tests. Uh, the Minister of Health indicated that there were a lot of lessons learned through the COVID-19 pandemic, things that we're still learning uh, that have uh, have led to better uh, our, our ability to make better decisions with respect to how we uh, we care for people with AIDS and HIV in this country. So we're proud of that incremental investment and, uh, and a higher degree of emphasis on the necessity to uh, to keep providing services and, and, and funding available to, to AIDS and HIV uh, serving community organizations. Adam, always a pleasure catching up with you. You have a very busy schedule. You've had a busy schedule, more busy coming up. Enjoy the cottage while you can, and we'll catch up with you again in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Jason. Nice to see you. Take care. 